Oh, uh, thank you. Get everything situated. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome back to Reality Water Cooler. I am Sarah in Texas, and this is our place to chat all the latest reality TV gossip. And of course, Jeff Lewis, who is already on the road to not being single anymore. Oh my gosh, we've got so much to get into, but let's get started with shout out news. We've got Kim Zolciak clickbaiting again, 90 Day Fiance, Andy Cohen has a date, John Hill has a date. Of course, I'm going to update you on all of Jeff Lewis's dates and upcoming dates. Oh my gosh, Thousand Pound Sister starts tonight. Oh my God, how are we going to squeeze all of this in? But oh my gosh, we will try so much for sure. Um, okay, I'm not going to give her much light. Kim Zolciak posted yet another embryo, or what do you call them? Think ultrasound pictures. God knows I've been pregnant so many times. I've had so many ultrasound pictures, but I was forgetting what they look like. I didn't even click on it. It's apparently, she's done this three times now, y'all. This is ridiculous. It's like she forgets that we have been talking about the clickbait. At this point, who is actually clicking on it at this point to give her money? I don't even know how that works, but I have long seen the whole link and bio thing. And I get that that makes people go to their Instagram profile or their website or whatever. Clearly, they're hoping other people buy other stuff. But I guess that's what Kim Zolciak's doing with this. Who is even partnering with her? Go get a freaking job, Kim. Go get a nine to fiver. You can do it. I know you can. Croy, go get a freaking job. What are you doing all day but laying around trying to hawk your tennis shoes and your nasty bags that nobody, frankly, really wants? Because I have seen that denim one with the pink stripe on it. It's not even a new video. She literally posts the same exact video saying, I'm just posting another video because so many of you are asking about it. I mean, who's asking about it? Just let me know. <laughs> I'm dying to know, literally. I keep waiting for her to block me. She has not blocked me yet. Okay, so last night I spent two hours on this part two of the other way tell all. The first 30 minutes was on some loser couple that none of us even remember. Like, I guess he's saying she cheated. She's saying he's a liar. Her, his mama says she's a liar. I was kind of disappointed because, and I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't fast forward through it. Instead, I kept watching thinking something good was going to happen because if they are wasting 30 minutes on this, TLC does an amazing job on their tell-alls. I mean, they're really good. I love how the past couples get involved and they give their opinion and they're all judgy of each other. I sort of love it all, but I was disappointed in that part of it. I love Kenny and Armando. So let me know in comments if you love them too. So they are the gay couple. I think they might have been the first gay couple on 90 Day Fiance. Now there's been a couple and trans and stuff, but Kenny is 61. Armando is like 34. Both single dads. Kenny has four kids. And I just learned last night, three of them were triplets. So he's very hesitant to put two of these seven embryos that they have because he is well aware what it is to have multiples and the expense. And I mean, I don't know. It's probably not good of me to say, but I, I sort of don't want them to have a baby. So nobody ruin it for me if they've already gone through and they have a surrogate that's pregnant already because I don't even want to know because I sort of don't want them to have another baby. I sort of want them to be content raising Hannah together in Mexico or wherever they live because honestly, I want Kenny to have enough time and opportunity to fly back to the U.S. to spend time with his four grown kids. And I think he has two grandkids now. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the best thing is for that. You know, Hannah has such a close family in Mexico. Clearly, that's where Armando feels comfortable. Kenny doesn't seem to know the language still. I don't know where they should end up, but I sort of hope they don't end up having another baby. And y'all know I've said also that I hope Jeff doesn't end up having another baby. Let me know in comments if you think he will, if you think he should. Remember, he's got this one, right? Is it the female embryo Jeff has left? He only has one left. I think he picked the male last time, but I think Monroe wants a baby sister. I'm getting it all mixed up now. I can't remember. Um, anyways, 
Danielle and Johan still disgusting. Like, oh, I love that she is staying in the Dominican Republic, like to live her best life. I hope she detaches from Johan's family because he sounds more and more disgusting. And I love when Tim, remember Tim and Veronica, he's on everything. Like, I love him so much, but he's on everything. I love his eyeliner. I love it all. Um, but I do hope Danielle detaches from that whole family because even Tim was like, Johan, you're disgusting. You're a creep. Like, sounds like he's just effing everybody for his, um, for money, like to get money. They, they've even got a website or a Facebook group called Handy Pandy. And that is where people like talk about the people that they're getting, like these Dominican Republic, specifically men that are trying to get like sugar mamas. And definitely he thought he had a sugar mama in Danielle. And I'm like, girl, she is like a school teacher. You need to go with someone else. <laughs> you wanted a, a sugar mama. Anyways, but apparently there's a part three because at the end, it didn't even end. Yes, part one, two hours, part two, two hours. And then there's another part three. Oh my God. And Tammy and Amy, they're single, ready to mingle, I'm assuming, on 1,000 Pound Sisters. That premieres tonight. So I definitely will be watching that for sure. On Andy Cohen Live, John Hill mentions again the guy that he met at the Hollywood House Live premiere party. They've already gone on like a couple of dates. It sounds like it's going really well. I'm so excited. But later, I was going to the mall with my 18-year-old because she's already done with uh, this semester for her senior year of high school. So we went to the mall and um, shopped and hung out together and stuff. And so I never really listened to John Hill the or the news with John Hill. He was on a rant, y'all. I mean, he sounded a little bit snotty, I must admit. He was even getting on the two producer guys like saying, hey, uh, I was looking at y'all's Instagram and you're not even following me. I, if I were to give you some mentor advice, you should be following the people that you work with. And if you're not going to be on Instagram, like one of the producers said, you're in social media, you need to be on, or you're in media, you need to be on social media. And I was like, oh my God, like, why are you getting so pissy today? It just sounded a little, I don't know, like maybe he's on this period or something. Um, but Andy's date was this guy that is a newly divorced I mean, I don't know. What do you want to call it? He was married to a woman. They have kids. He recently got divorced. He's a huge Bravo fan. So that was kind of a red flag for Andy. But I don't know. I think he's in his single moment. Like he's happy to be finally out and gay. They had a lot in common to chat with the, about the kids and stuff. But I think he's, uh, I think John and Andy are right that he's kind of in his ready to like F everybody in the city, do all sorts of extracurricular, you know, pills and such. And maybe he's not at the right. I think there's a timing for people. So I think he could be a good guy for Andy Cohen. It may not be the right time. Like he might need to kind of sow some seeds and kind of maybe come back to Andy in a couple of years. John said 10 years. Andy Cohen said, call me in three years. So anyways, I don't know what happened at Coles last night. There was police everywhere, all over our main street in my town. Um, my husband looked at all the Facebook groups. I don't know what, if you're wondering what I did, I posted an Instagram story last night. I was going to Coles to return something from Amazon. And I looked up and there was police everywhere, all over the street. So I did my little return and I hightailed at home. So. Anyways, okay, let's get started with today's Jeff Lewis. It was, oh, I was going to say also real quick, Rick and Kelly show. Um, Rick, I mean, Kelly sort of apologized to Heather McDonald, not really, uh, but she is definitely not going to get a Christmas card from Elizabeth Vargas because she went off on her yet again. Apparently she had gone off on her Patreon about it and she wanted to more explain it to all of her smashers. That way they kind of understood the, the timeline, but go listen for that. If you're wondering what went down, because she kind of gives all these details about it. It's kind of crazy for sure. Um, anyways. Okay. Today on Jeff Lewis, two people I've already seen in concert live, or what do you call it when they're a comedian live? I've seen their live shows. So January, 2023, I flew to LA and some Jeff Lewis friends and I rented a house in Newport and we went and saw Fortune Fiends or it was such a good show. Zach Noe Towers was here in like September, maybe. 
in six of us, Houstonian, uh, Houston area, Jeff Lewis friends got together for dinner and went and saw Zach Noe Tower. So they are both on the show together and they just mesh so well. I feel like there was a tiny moment where Zach was like reverting back to his like total nastiness where he like gets a little too um, into the sex talk. And then they kind of nipped it in the bud. I think they were going to a commercial at that point, actually. So anyways, but they start off with something I kind of like. Are you a piano, guitar, sing-along at the party kind of person? Or are you a magician at a party kind of person? Because I have my thoughts. First of all, I'm sort of disappointed that this crazy ass block you in a corner magician never found me at the Hollywood house lift party. I'm like, where was I? Like literally I never saw a magician. I know that Kristen Tateman told me about her amazing tarot card reading. He, that person was in the corner. I never saw that either. I know that Donna Bowling's husband, I think it was Lance that told me he was going to go outside to play some game. Like, I guess there was all this kind of stuff. The only thing I saw was the chocolate chip cookies later in the day. Uh, Amy Phillips is the one that had this huge chocolate chip cookie in her hand. She's like, I'm taking this on the drive home. I stuck that thing in my little purse. It was delicious at midnight. I tell you that. And they're right though. There wasn't a lot of food being passed around, but I think I said yesterday, you know, I had a, a, a bag in my hand. My phone was out. I mean, I wasn't really going to like eat food as I'm talking to everybody. You know what I mean? Like I Definitely probably should have made time to eat before. And I just don't even think I had time to eat the whole day. But anyways, it was such a fun party. But I am with everyone else. Magicians, uh, I like magicians, but they really need to, they really need to impress me. And it doesn't sound like this guy was impressive at all. I'm not even sure he was actually with Holly with Amazon, if he was really hired. I need to text. So I met so many like big heavy hitters from Amazon at the unofficial after party at Schmidt's. I don't even think they had planned it. Like we went, like Justin Martindale grabbed my hand and said, Hey, are you coming to the after party with me? So yes, I got in his car with his friends. Then Paige and Kristen um, met us there very soon after. And I never even knew if it was a planned after party or not, I really don't think it was. These Amazon people all came in soon after though. So I don't even think it was planned. But anyways, now I'm curious if this magician was actually part of the planning of this party or not. Because it sounds like he was kind of irritating people. And worse than that, Jeff Lewis asked, was he even cute? And Zach and Fortune were like, mm. so I'm like, if somebody's cute or handsome or has like nice shoes, money, I think it all kinds of goes out the window, but I don't think if you have that, Jeff was like, what the hell was this guy doing at my party? Um, okay. So Jeff says again, he had another coffee reading. So here is my cup. So don't forget, uh, Paula too has been doing these Armenian coffee readings. He apparently does them all the time at parties. Thank you for that rose, uh, the, the ice cream cone, Cindy. Apparently he does them at all these parties they had done them at and even a cook and kibitz. So months ago, that's where he read Jeff Lewis's coffee. And that's where they told him that he was going to have these three tornadoes or volcanoes and all this stuff was going to happen. It ended up coming true. So at BravoCon, I get into a, a, an Uber and I head down to the Delano Hotel. I go up to Poland and Patrick's suite and they do my coffee reading. And just like Jeff said, and other people have shared with me, I'm so glad that I had an in-person one. I do not think I would spend the time watching the minute and a half video to tell me how to do it. I probably would have been confused. I don't even know how to make coffee at my own house. So I'm so thankful that Paul and Patrick were preparing my coffee for me and I felt more comfortable with it and everything. But don't forget, I made an Instagram story immediately after my reading, I had none of these three December trips planned at all. They were not on my table at all. And he said, where are you traveling? And now all of these three trips have happened suddenly for me, right? He also said big things were happening for me. And he's absolutely right about that. A couple of big things have come up. Some I've shared, some I haven't been able to share yet. Some I'm still waiting on some answers back, but Big things that I 
am so excited about, but I would have never dreamt were on the horizon, even just in early November. And now this is just mid-December. So I am just dying at how accurate it is. Jeff also says he's done a couple of them. He did this one apparently last night. Oh, oh, thank you. Y'all are giving me something. Oh, thank you. Uh, Cindy, an ice cream cone. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> anyways, thank y'all for badges and all the stuff that y'all give to me on Instagram and TikTok. I really appreciate it. I think there's like stickers and stuff on YouTube. Every, it's funny how every platform has its own little fun thing that you can buy for people. Anyway, so thank y'all for all of that. But Jeff talks again on the after show about the reading too, and how this one is really good too. And he had a lot of questions to ask. So he didn't really go into the details, but I'm definitely going to be paying attention to what this latest reading says about him for sure. Um, what did you think about Gatorland and Oscar? So apparently he's decided not to go zip lining, which I think is probably the good choice, right? Um, if you've got to sign your life away before they even give you the safety video, I don't know that that's going to be the right thing for me. I like zip lining as long as I feel very safe and secure and it's not too far up because I am afraid of heights. It freaks me out. But gators aren't my thing at all. Matter of fact, my daughter was taking her senior pictures a couple of weeks ago, this great outdoor park. And there was a sign, this public park, and this sign said something like, beware of gators. And I'm like, holy shit. Because, I mean, you never know what they're going to, what's going to make them run after you or if they feel, I mean, they're animals, they're wild animals. So, no, the fact that this caller called in, I think on the after show and said her whole family loves Gatorland and they're going on Christmas Day. I think Jeff was like, okay, like, okay, that's where you're going to spend Christmas Day. But I mean, that's why some of those places are open, to, you know, 365 days out of the year because people do love and I think she said somebody was even flying in from New York and like he's this big attorney and he wants to go see there. So, yeah, somebody said you couldn't pay me to do that above Gators. I mean, I love Oscar. Y'all know I got to meet him at the party. He is amazing. But yeah, he loves his job. He kind of reminds me of SpongeBob. Like he doesn't want to ruin anything to where he doesn't um, come back to Jeff Lewis Live and Sirius XM because he actually loves his job, which I thought was so, so sweet. Um, yes. Somebody says, um, the after show caller asked about a hookup between Paige and Pej. I know nothing about that, but I don't think if they had a hookup, I'm pretty sure Pej wouldn't have his girlfriend of 20 years coming into town for this Toys, R uh, Toys for Tots event that he's hosting. But he didn't exactly knock it down, did he? I mean, I don't know. It was kind of weird. And even Jeff, I love when Jeff gets in the middle of all the chump drama and the gossip because remember he's not on this big checks chain that they talk about he would never want like 400 texts all the time that they're talking about so when he says that he has heard about this hookup and he was wondering who it was but then he even tells Pej, i feel like you're the kind of guy that wouldn't like kiss and tell like you wouldn't say anything if it happened i'm like wait did something like is Paige holding out for me from me like i'm dying um yes monica said that a, a bj didn't count i know like seriously um yes yes Paige calls him for advice about dates i think somebody even dm me yesterday and said that, that they're more like brother and sister they become like really friendly i also love how pej is talking about several times kristen takeman as y'all know i was invited to go to pet uh, Paige and Kristen's, I was about to say Paige and Paige's hotel room. <laughs> I promise you that was not the case. Kristen and Paige shared a hotel room at the Pendry. I don't have any idea where Paige was staying. He might've gone home to his LA house. I don't know. And it was all four of us hanging out with um, their makeup artists and their hairdressers were still there finishing up. And, you know, I saw nothing but just friendliness between Paige and Paige. So I don't think anything's going on there, but I don't know. The biggest thing on the after show was, um, who was it, Alyssa or Monica saying something, maybe Doug and Jeff will end up being together. 
and maybe they're already together underneath our nose and we don't even know it. Like I would just die. That was cracking me up. Um, <clears throat> what else? I love how Jeff told us why he was snippy. So I don't think any of us heard this whenever. Oh, thank y'all for all the the live goals that y'all are sending me on TikTok. Thank you. Make sure to tap the screen too. It's free. Just tap, tap, tap. It gives us likes on TikTok and it helps other people that love reality TV and Jeff Lewis to come find us for sure. Um, I think it was 2000. I heard the chumps. I did donate money. I sent Paige uh, Venmo. So her Venmo is at P-A-I-G-E-D as in dog, 91. That is her Venmo. Just send her any amount and she is going to Target today to buy gifts to donate from all the chumps and the chumpettes uh, to Toys for Tots. So it is, you know, absolutely trust her. I have raised so much money over the years personally and in my neighborhood and things. And um, I know a lot about it. And uh, I absolutely trust her, obviously, with um, sending her the money and know that she is buying all this stuff on our behalf for Toys for Tots. So anyway, so do that. At P A I G E D is in dog 91 or D is in Davis at Venmo. That's her Venmo. Anyways, um, but Jeff starts talking about how he got upset with Shane, which I was cringing because I mean, I do not need Jeff to be up at Shane. Like, holy crap, no way. But apparently, this picture that he had promoted. Uh, when I was out shopping with my daughter, I saw a thing come up saying Jeff has made a post or made a story. And I'm like, oh, what is he posting about? I didn't know he was going to be on the talk with Jerry O'Connell. Love him. And uh, although my direct TV is messed up right now, they're apparently arguing with CBS. So I couldn't even set it up to record. Thanks a lot, direct TV. Anyway, so if anyone has a clip of it, post it in the Jeff Lewis Obsessed Facebook group or send me a DM or if you post it, tag me in it. I'll reshare it for you. Um, anyways, but he apparently was not supposed to post that picture until tomorrow. There was some term he used for it. Like it's in, it's in delay until they can actually post it. But, uh, Shane went ahead and took it down without asking him. And he, Jeff was like, no, no, no. When I post something, if I get in trouble, I'm still not going to take it down. I wanted it left up there. Basically, don't do something without asking my permission. But then I love that Shane reminded him and stood up for himself when he was saying, yeah, but just yesterday you were blasting me for asking too many questions. And yet today I didn't ask this one question. I just followed what the talk said to do. I removed the Instagram story. And then Jeff was like, no, 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 put that crap back up there. So anyways, Mine was already reposted because I was at the mall and I just took a screenshot and posted it. I'm leaving mine up there too. Cause I feel like, I mean, I would, I guess if Jeff would have said, you know, please remove this. Uh, I have always, and this kind of goes back to even when I started my fan account, Jeff says to always run things by him. Well, I didn't know that about him a year and a half ago when I started my fan account, but I did DM him. And I said, hey, I think I would like to start a fan account. Are you okay with it? He said, absolutely do it. He approved the name. Shortly after that, I had the idea to start going Instagram live. Now I'm live everywhere and on a podcast, Jeff Lewis Obsessed. But I said, hey, I would like to start recapping and chatting about Jeff Lewis Live. Are you okay with that? He said, absolutely do it. So I sort of love that looking back, I, I guess I just did that because it felt like it was the right thing to do, like to ask uh, Jeff permission and kind of run projects by him. Because, you know, even though it's anyone's free will, everyone does a podcast on Bravo or TLC content, things like that. No one was doing Jeff Lewis. So I felt like a little more, I think us chumps and chumpettes are very loyal, very protective, very happy and excited for Jeff and his um, successes and his projects. So I think to me, it just felt like the right thing to do to ask permission for that. Right. So anyways, oh yeah. Somebody said the talk is boring, but I love Jerry. I know. So I don't record it every day. I was only setting it up to record because it was Jeff Lewis, but I do love Jerry O'Connell. Um, but there's only so much time in the day and I'm definitely can't make time for that. 
Um, what else? But it seems all is okay now. Uh, but I sort of like that Shane was kind of sticking up for himself and saying something. Okay, let's talk about the after show today with Monica and Pay uh, Pej Vadat. They do talk about the toys for tots, but let's get straight to it. Let's chat Jeff's date. So he gives this whole line of all these guys that he's got waiting to date. And then this new guy that called in yesterday, he didn't even know his name. Oh my God, he called him Randy. And I'm like, who's Randy? It's James. And I didn't even catch it because sometimes when I'm listening, I'm like loading the dishwasher or something. But s several of y'all sent me his Instagram uh, account already. So I guess he had said his Instagram. Now we know from Jeff, they were DMing yesterday. Jeff has a really good feeling about the guy and they're going to go out very soon. They don't even live in the same city. So this guy's in Chicago. It seems like what, as I was spending way too much time on his Instagram, looking through it, uh, I think Jeff could help him with his uh, interior design choices. Like he just apparently in October, we did his bedroom. I think it could be a little more warm, a little more inviting, maybe a little more color. So I think Jeff could see him as a project, but I also love that Jeff already has moved on and they're already texting. They're already texting less than 24 hours later, they'd start DMing. And now that Jeff's given his phone number out and he says he has a really good feeling about the guy. Oh my God. Um, is she comparing herself to Shane and his duties? I don't know what you're talking about. Who are you talking about? Um, yes. I, Melanie says, I love that Jeff feels that way about his post, but it was not Shane's fault. He did what was asked of him. I do think though, that Shane has to know at this point that he should run everything by Jeff and even just say, um, somebody tell her what the guy's Instagram was. I don't remember what it was. Um, but he's cute, works out a lot. He's a swimmer. So don't forget Jeff was a swimmer in high school. Uh, I kind of saw the swimming picture and I was like, who took this picture of you swimming though? I guess those are the, when you're at the gym or you're swimming, like how do you, do you just ask somebody? Like when these people do these workout videos, I have seen some people like set up a camera at the gym, but like, even like Joey Zalzik, I'm like, who's taking these pictures of you, right? Like, who does that? I don't even know. Uh, oh, Papa Bear on TikTok says, was there any blowback from Monroe coming to the premiere? Not that Jeff has said, but he also made it very clear that he took the picture himself on his own camera. They went down to take the red carpet picture. So no paparazzi owns that picture. It was actually done on Jeff's camera. And he did that that way. Nobody was like taking pictures and yelling her name and all this stuff. And there wasn't crowds there. He did it very early. So I love that he did that for sure. Um, anyways, but this guy is a chiropractor. Alyssa sounds super excited. So Alyssa made no secret that she wasn't the biggest chef stew fan, right? So she sounds like she's ready to marry Jeff off. Like literally, it was hilarious. Pej seems super excited. But Monica... His friend said, please don't pair up until your birthday. Okay, y'all. Jeff and I share the same March 21st birthday. He's three years older than me. It is December 12th. Do you really think he can be single, like casually dating until March 24th? There's no way. There's no way. I mean, he already failed in the fact that he said he was not going to date. He was going to focus on himself until the new year. I mean, that went out the window five weeks ago. I think he's been dating this tequila Red Bull guy for like five weeks now. Pretty much since he told us he and, you know, Stu broke up, I guess, right? Um, yes, Tracy says Jeff is lucky to have Shane. I agree. I mean, and after meeting Shane's mom and dad, I would, I would just even be more heartbroken if, if Shane and Jeff left on bad terms. Speaking of bad terms though, maybe, I mean, I have no idea. You know, Jeff had said that Kian was leaving and he, the social media guy, and he let us know that he was probably making a mistake, that he felt like, um, you know, the grass was greener on the other side, right? But that he was also invited to Thanksgiving, but he didn't show up at Thanksgiving or I saw no pictures of him. 
And then he said that he was, uh, or people asked me if he was at the Hollywood house lift party. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I certainly didn't see him, but I also didn't see a lot of people. They talked about Chris Hansen to kill a, to catch a predator guy. Never saw him. So there was lots of people that was there that I never saw. I didn't see Jackie Schimmel till the very end of the show. So anyways, who knows? Um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, this Toys for Tots party tonight. I love that. So it's at the Beverly Center, but I hope the Beverly Center doesn't listen to the Jeff Lewis Live after show because Monica and Paige were not very complimentary of it. They were pretty much like, it's the trash. Um, they tried to redo it. I've been there two or three times. Uh, I don't think it's bad at all, but I don't mind them all. I kind of like them all. Like, but then again, I am a Taurus. So I guess my expectations of it are kind of much lower, but Pej and Monica were not giving it um, too much uh, good stuff about it all. Yes, Bobby says, isn't Hollywood House Lift on today? I think it probably is. So I'm going to pop over to Amazon Freebie after this because we know it's supposed to launch on Wednesdays, but they did this with season one. Everything always came out the day earlier. It was so confusing. Uh no, I think it was at the Beverly Center is where they were saying the Toys for Tots party is tonight. So, oh, I've been wondering about Zoila. He hasn't mentioned her at all. Somebody call in and ask him about Zoila. Has Jeff mentioned any updates on how she's doing? Remember, she was like recovering and then her foot surgery or something. Now her sister Aurora is, is working almost full time or full time for, for him. Um, I don't know how she's doing. She was supposed to kind of come back as Monroe's babysitter, like maybe on Saturdays, but I don't even know that she's doing that. She seems to be doing something else. So I think John Hill's considered a chump. Yeah. Jeff always says you're a chump if you've come on Jeff Lewis Live more than once. So Sarah Foster is now a chump. Um, anyways, what else? We have like 15 minutes if y'all just want to have like open-ended questions. Can we believe his team was going to pay Heather to go to the premiere? I talked about that yesterday, Papa Bear. I truly believe, because it sounds to me like Amazon and Jeff Lewis camps were not fully communicating, as we know from the invitations or lack thereof to the cast. So I don't think Heather McDonald would make that up about them negotiating with her. Now, why would she waste anyone's time? She says she just wanted to see what number they would get to. But it, why? It, that's so, so weird. Such a waste of your time. Like, why? Why care? Like, you're not going to show up to that party and get paid. So why? I don't know. Content? I have no idea. No idea. Ooh. JM says, I don't get the feeling John Hill wants to be a chump. I do. Y'all go listen to the news with John Hill today at the beginning and let me know what you thought. I just thought he was being, I don't know. I was surprised at how bitchy he was being about the two producers on the show, Adam and the other guy's name that don't follow him on Instagram. And he was really catty about it. Like, yeah, it said follow, not follow back. And I was like, oh my God. And he just went on and on about it. Um, John Hill could be the chump MJ was talking about. No, I agree with M Mercedes. She was just being drama. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I think she was just, I don't know why she was saying that because I don't think anyone left together. And I don't think um, whoever this guy was that was a friend of somebody's, a plus one that John met, I don't think he's considered a chump. So uh, I think she said definitely two chumps left together. So I don't know. I mean, for all we know, she could be talking about Paul and Patrick because technically they are two chumps. It's almost like on the tell all of 90 Day Fiance last night. At the very end, they asked if anyone has ever had a menage a trois and they were holding up the, the three fingers of like, put your finger down if you've ever, never have I ever, they were playing. And uh, Tim, one of the former 90 Day Fiance said, I have had one in with another 90 Day Fiance cast member. And I forget her name. The other girl that lived in Connecticut or somewhere. She's already divorced, I think. And she said, me too. Well, who they were talking about is the other cast member they were on the show with. They had a menage a trois with them and someone else. So anyways. Um, 
Ooh, Pat says, I think Andy's getting jealous of Jeff's chump army. I mean, I don't know. What are Andy Cohen's fans called? We need a name for Andy Cohen fans. Is there one? Like chumpettes, chumps for Jeff Lewis, um, Swifties for Taylor Swift. I mean, the Beehive for Beyonce. What is Andy Cohen's band name? Hmm. Somebody needs to start an Andy Cohen obsessed. Yeah, it's all money in his pocket, she says. Do you, Sunny Meadow, do you think a lot of these public personas poke at each other publicly because they know it gives them more views? That brings me, maybe, I don't really know, maybe, but that makes me think of this Amanda McCants video that y'all were sending me on Instagram yesterday. I guess some guy, girl does an account where they like come up to people on the streets of LA that like look like they work out and then ask them what their workout video or what their workout regime is. A lot of you think, and I think too, that this Amanda McCants, I mean, we know she's a comedian. We know she's a, an influencer, you know, I think she's probably friends with this guy. It looked very pre-arranged. It did not. I mean, she's carrying a purse, which, yes, I guess you can carry a purse to the gym. Most people, and some people carry a purse. Most people, I, I've been going to the gym since I was 15 years old. So I am legit a lifetime gym rat. I love going to the gym, always have. So I've seen a lot of people at the gym. I'm not saying she couldn't have been coming from the gym. It She wasn't sweating. She had fresh makeup on. Yeah, Lex Sheik says it gave stage. It was just, she was being funny, which was great. Um, but it just didn't seem like a real, like, oh, I just happened to find Amanda McCants on the streets of LA and ask her about her workout thing. So I don't know. What do y'all think? Yeah. Gail says social media setups are not unusual. Yeah, it did seem, which is fine, right? But just whatever. So, but that made me think of it when you said, are things staged? I definitely don't think Jeff Lewis stages anything. I think Jeff says things he probably shouldn't. I think he's quiet when he wants to be quiet. Remember, I always say silence is very loud. Um, I don't know. There's a lot going on with that, a lot being said of why he's being quiet uh, and it possibly driving someone to crazy town or something to that effect. I don't know. Don't know. Uh, what are you going to wear to the dinner? Ooh, good question. I was at the mall today in this store that we passed going to the AT&T, the Apple store, sorry, the Apple store for my daughter was called like a Vita. I don't even know what it was called. No, Aquila, A-K-I-T-A, -A, some store. It was kind of like fun, hip, dressy clothes, going out, like high boots, something I would have never thought I would wear, but they had some really cute stuff. So I don't know. I, I, I didn't, I was, I'm already dressed for the gym tonight. So let's just say I wasn't in the mode. Like I've got tennis shoes on and socks and paint. Like I just, I hate trying on clothes and this, there's nothing, this store is not a chain. I don't think so. There's not one near me that I could just bought a couple of things, tried it on at home and returned it. So I don't know, but I might go back there soon. I don't even know what I'm wearing this Sunday y'all to the Jeff Lewis dinner. I don't even know what I'm wearing. I'm going to pay attention more to the weather. Um, I do have a nice fake fur that's like black and white that I bought for uh, I bought for BravoCon 2022 in New York, and then it didn't even end up being cold enough there to ever wear it. So that's kind of a dressy, you know, like a short coat. Like if I wear like a a dress or a uh, not a romper, what do you call it? a jumpsuit, things like that. Oh, shout out, Darla! Happy early birthday! You're not old. 65 is perfect. Happy birthday, Darla. Um, what else? Thank y'all for hitting the like button, AC. Thank you. Smash the thumbs up button on YouTube. The like button, everyone else. Tap the screen on TikTok. Y'all, y'all are really sucking on TikTok today. Just tap the screen. It gives us likes. It's free. People in LA are different at the gym, but this was definitely a setup. 
I mean, it seemed like it screamed a setup, right? A black dress, a winter white coat. Ooh, I'm too messy for a winter white coat. Um, I do have a camel coat coming in soon, though. That's being mailed to me very soon. I leave Sunday and I fly back Monday. So if you're in the New York City area or can get to Manhattan, uh, we will definitely be having a small meetup with some people Monday, December 18th, either like 10 a.m. New York time, 11, somewhere around there. So uh, join the Jeff Lewis Obsessed Facebook group for more of those emails. Oh, my God. And DM Aaron Leachy and ask her what to wear. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a formal dinner, but it is a dinner in New York City. I figure in New York City at Christmas time with a little more dressier. Um, I do know my friend Melanie is wearing uh, cream and gold. So that's going to be beautiful. I don't know that I'll order seafood. I'm probably going to eat before. That way I can eat very little there. Like, I just think I want to pick on some stuff. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm just dying that I'm going to have dinner with Jeff and Shane. I just am dying. So thank you. Thank you, Melanie and Scott for inviting me. I am just over the moon. Um, I've got some really fun gifts for her and, um, Anyway, so I'm very excited to meet them. Always wear black. I wear black so much, though. But I probably am going to wear black. Because I also can't stand being cold in a restaurant. So I've got, like, cute tops and stuff that, you know, I could wear the coat over. But there's nothing worse than being cold in a restaurant. So New York is so beautiful during Christmas. I am going to do my own hair and makeup. So we'll see how that goes. I did get my hair. I did hire Claudio again. I want to get on it for makeup, but I think I'm going to try my own makeup for the Chumpmas party, December 21st in LA. I only did my hair because everyone else on the, the chat group, there's like so many of us that are going to get together either at Sight Glass, um, December 21st morning or December 22nd morning. Uh, we're having a meetup with the dosers and the chumpettes at four o'clock at the W Hotel, right next to um, the Bourbon Room Hollywood. It is going to be so much fun. But so many of y'all were getting hair and makeup done and getting all glammed up. And I thought, well, I better get my hair done. So I love Claudio. Uh, so I hired him again. So if anyone needs him, um, he's going to come to my hotel, the SLS Marriott. So it'll be easy if you're there. A satin suit long jacket. Yeah, I have to make sure it's easy for me to steam whenever I get there because traveling, I like easy stuff to travel with. So like sequins doesn't wrinkle, you know, I don't know. Could we ask the cost of hair and makeup? DM them and ask because I don't want I don't like to give out costs of things. I didn't get a bar. I didn't get a special price or anything, but I never know like what you know, if maybe they've raised their prices. I mean, I don't know anything about that. So yes, DM them, uh, Claudio and Anna for their prices. What is Melanie wearing? Um, I know what she's wearing. She's wearing cream and gold. So yes, Mary says always overdress in Manhattan, especially in the evening. That's what I say. You can never be too dressed up. Uh, think very classy, just like my dress at the Hollywood house lift premiere. I love, oh, I love J. Crew. I was just there because these jeans I bought, I needed two sizes smaller. They were way too big on me. I wore them in LA. Yep, I wore them. I pulled a dug. I wore these jeans. I could tell the second I put them on and I tried them on. I thought I did try them on. I don't know. I seem to have lost seven pounds or something. But anyways, I went back and exchanged them the other day and got two sizes smaller in these amazing jeans from the J. Crew outlet, which I didn't even know was an outlet. It wasn't at the outlets. It was just at a regular shopping strip that I go to. Wear red. I do love the idea of red. I might do. I don't know. I know. I've got to figure it out for sure. Got to figure it out. Anyways. Well, we are going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for joining live. This will go up as a replay everywhere. Please make sure to like, make sure to save, make sure to share, favorite, comment, all the things, and make sure to listen as an as a the uh, podcast, Jeff Lewis Obsessed, if you want. It's available on video, on Spotify, all the things that goes up except on TikTok. So TikTok, you got to join live. Anyways, okay, I will see you tomorrow, 12 o'clock Pacific. 3 p.m. Eastern, same place.
Bye, Chumpettes.